we have already learned about what a subject is and we have also seen that a verb and a subject need to agree with each other in order to make a correct sentence. So today we are going to learn about some more rules. Now the basic rule is that a verb must agree with its subject in number and person. So this is the basic rule that needs to be followed. After this, there are some additional rules that also needs to be followed. So let us see. Two strong men stand at the entrance. Now here, what is the subject? Two strong men, that's our subject. And what is the verb? Stand. Now when we have two strong men, it denotes plural. So plural subject requires a plural verb. Hence, we have used the plural form of the verb stand. And the plural form is the same as the base verb. So it is simply stand. So two strong men stand at the entrance. Now, if we say at the entrance stand two strong men. Now, you will notice that both these sentences mean the same. Only the difference is that they have been written in a slightly different manner. So how have we written this? Here at the entrance comes at the beginning, then comes the verb and then the subject. So even when I say at the entrance stand two strong men, the subject of the sentence is still two strong men. So the subject is plural but the verb here comes before the subject. Still, it needs to agree with the subject. Now, this subject being a plural subject, we need to use a plural verb. So, we use stand in this case as well. So, what do we learn from here? We learn that the subject of a sentence can be either at the beginning or at the end. But the verb always needs to agree with the subject, no matter the position of the subject. Two strong men guard the entrance. Now here, two strong men, once again is the subject of the sentence. But what is the verb here? It is guard. Now here too you will notice that two strong men being plural, we have used a plural verb which is guard. But if we say the entrance is guarded by two strong men, so in this case, what is our subject? Is it two strong men? No. Here the verb is, is guarded. So what is guarded? The entrance is guarded. So our subject becomes the entrance. And the entrance, here entrance is a singular noun. Hence, we need a singular verb here. So what do we use? We use is and not a plural verb. So in the first case, we see two strong men guard the entrance. In the second case, it becomes the entrance is guarded by two strong men. Now, meaning wise, they are not different. They mean the same. But the construction of the sentence is different. As a result of which, in one case, the subject is the strong men. Whereas in the other case, the entrance is the subject. So, the subject of the first sentence being plural, we use a plural verb. Whereas in the second case, we have a singular subject. As a result, we have used a singular verb. So, it is is guarded and not are guarded. So, here two strong men is not the subject. So, while writing a sentence, we should be careful to identify the correct subject and accordingly decide upon the verb. Rita cuts her clothes herself. Now in this case, Rita is the subject and the verb is cuts. Now Rita is actually referring to third person singular number. Hence, we have used a singular verb that is cuts. So the singular form of the verb cut is cuts. So singular subject, singular verb. Now if I say Rita stitches her clothes herself. So once again, our subject is Rita, which is singular. And so we have used a singular verb, that is stitches. 
So stitches is the singular form of the verb stitch. Now if we write both these sentences together, what does the new sentence become? It becomes Rita cuts and stitches her clothes herself. So here the subject is Rita. But we have two verbs which are cuts and stitches. So here both these verbs are telling us what Rita does. Hence both these verbs need to agree with the subject. So Rita cuts and Rita stitches. So the rule is verbs throughout the sentence should agree with the subject. So no matter how many verbs are describing the action of the subject, each of them needs to agree with the subject. So Rita cuts and stitches. It will not be Rita cuts and stitch or Rita cut and stitches. Both the verbs should agree with the subject. The student sketch in the art period. Now here the subject is the students which is plural. So sketch is the verb here and it is a plural verb. Why? Because we have a plural subject. Similarly, the students paint in the art period. Once again, the subject is the students which is plural and hence we have a plural verb paint. Now when we are going to say the students sketch and paint in the art period, what exactly is happening? Sketch and paint. Both are the verbs here and both the verbs are describing the action of the same subject. Hence both of these verbs need to agree with the subject which is the students. So the students being plural, we need a plural verb in both the cases. So we have used sketch and paint. So the verbs throughout the sentence need to agree with the subject. The number of birds in the neighborhood dash decreased over the years. So here, what are we going to use? Has or have. So what do you think? The number of birds in the neighborhood dash decreased over the years. Now in this case, what is the subject of our sentence? It is the number of birds in the neighborhood. This entire part is the subject. Now within the subject we see that it's a long phrase. So what is the proper subject in this case? Is it number? Is it birds? Or is it neighborhood? So we have three nouns in the subject. Well, it is the verb or the noun number. Why? Because of birds is describing number and in the neighborhood is actually describing the noun birds. So which birds are we talking about? Birds in the neighborhood. And which number are we talking about? Of the birds in the neighborhood. So we see this is the noun which is the proper subject. Now number is singular. So we are going to use has not have. So it will be has decreased. So the number of birds in the neighborhood has decreased over the years. So even if number of birds, we may be talking about many birds, but here the noun number being singular, the verb needs to be singular as well. So the number noun is related to this verb. Hence, we have used a singular verb. Now, if our sentence is, a number of birds gathers round the pond every morning. Do you think it's a correct sentence? A number of birds gathers round the pond every morning. Now here when I say a number of birds, I am actually referring to not one bird but many birds. So a number of birds means several birds. So this entire term, a number of, means several. Hence, even if we have a number of birds, we are actually talking about a plural subject. Hence, in this case, we need a plural verb and not a singular verb. So gathers is a singular verb. Hence, this is not the correct way of writing. So our correct sentence would be, a number of birds gather round the pond every morning. 
So what is the most important thing to note here? In the first case, what was the phrase? The number of birds. In the second case, what is the phrase? A number of birds. Now note the difference between these two phrases. When I say the number of birds, my focus is the word number. So this becomes the proper subject. Accordingly, we decide whether the verb should be singular or plural. But in this case, when we use the phrase a number of, so it can be anything with any noun. When we use a number of, we denote plural. So here, my subject is not number, but a number of birds together. So whenever you come across a subject which contains a phrase like a number of something, you will know that entire subject will be treated as plural. Accordingly, you will also need a plural verb for that subject. Whereas when you have the number of, so the number of in that case, you will simply note that number is the proper subject in that case and you will accordingly use a singular verb in those cases. Fill in the blanks with the correct options. A number of steps dash been taken by the government but the number of school dropouts dash still high in some states. Now in this first blank what are the options given to us? It's has or have. In this second blank it is is or are. So let us take up one at a time. A number of steps dash been taken by the government. So what should be the answer? Has or have. Now we have already learned that whenever we have a subject containing a phrase a number of, that subject is considered as plural. So here a number of steps would mean several steps. So we need a plural verb after this. So our answer will be have. So a number of steps have been taken by the government. But the number of school dropouts dash still high in some states. So in this case, what is the subject? The number of school dropouts. Now here we have the number of. So our proper subject would be number. Number is singular. Hence we need a singular verb which is is. So the entire sentence reads, A number of steps have been taken by the government but the number of school dropouts is still high in some states. So today we have learned about some rules regarding subject verb agreement. We are going to learn some more in the coming lectures. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to get all learning resources as per ICSC, CBSC, IB, Cambridge or any other curriculum. Over 5000 amazing lectures across Math, Science, English and Social Science. Our unique interactive video technology keeps you engaged and our iDictionary feature allows you to quickly revise any concept. Master each topic at your own pace with our adaptive practice technology and 1 million plus questions. Get instant answers and detailed solutions. Be exam ready by taking unlimited mock tests. Performance analysis along with actionable feedback. Personal tutors to resolve your slightest of doubts. That's not all. You can also win amazing prizes like PlayStation, iPad, watches and many more along with certificates through our Earn As You Learn program. So at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy, it is rewarding too. So register for free now.